Hey folks, it's Dag, and this is an aviation update. So folks, what I want to do is every two weeks, I'm going to kind of do a recap of what I'm doing with everything aviation. So today we're going to talk about the C-130, the B-36D, the MSL-2, the airbike, the rocket plane project, my mega power supply, a vacuum forming video I did, a new project for Ceph next year, and a plane carrier. And folks, just so you know, I'm, I'm going to try to do my best to share as much as I can as far as, you know, the pictures and everything that I'm doing, okay? Now, on the C-130, folks, I've had a lot of questions because, you know, I got 99.9% .9 of it done and sold it. And uh, the guy who bought it is trying to make it a four-engine turbine, okay? He's had a lot of problems getting the fuel system work, but he's also a very eccentric person kind of person that doesn't really want a lot of people you know he doesn't really post on social media or do anything so i just get an update every once in a while from him um the great thing though is all my drawings are on my patreon okay so if you want to join for five bucks you can get access to all the c-130 drawings and uh basically build your own c-130 okay it's a 160 inch wingspan it's a pretty big bird but just wanted to kind of touch base on the c-130 I also get an awful lot of people reaching out to me about the B-36 project I worked on. Again, folks, I, um, you know, I do pretty well in life that uh, the industry I work in and the job I have that I'm able to afford, you know, some nice things, but I'm not rich. Okay. And I know that's a very relative term to some people. I'd be rich to other people like Elon Musk. I'm probably poor. But the thing is, is that when I build a project like this and somebody offers me a lot of money, sometimes it funds the next five years of me doing RC. Just like my C-130, all my drawings for my C uh, B-36 are on my Patreon. And there's a ton of drawings. And also I have all the CADs there. So I got PDFs and CADs of almost all my designs, I believe, are now on my Patreon. But one thing about the B-36 is it's completely scalable. I've had a couple of people... Uh, take the CAD drawings and actually make it 100 inch instead of being 257 inches and make it for small electrics. So I just wanted to kind of talk about both the C-130 and the, B1, the B-36 a little bit and, you know, just kind of share that. So next, what I'm going to talk about, folks, real quick is the MSL-2. Um, there's plenty of videos out there about why it crashed, how it crashed. It's a million to one that that wire melted and made it crash. But um, as far as getting it back into the air, folks, I am really, really tight on funds uh, right now in my life for the hobby, okay? And just had a daughter graduate OSU. She's moving on toward her doctorate, and uh, life has just gotten really expensive, folks. And the hobby always is the last one in line to get money. But the MSL-2 should be flying by the end of 2025, Okay. And it just needs new wings, and I got to inspect the fuselage, and it'll be ready to go. Now, folks, I have lost quite a few followers on YouTube because I'm not working on the airbike that much. I've actually gotten a couple of nasty emails saying that, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go into it, but I had quite a few followers following my airbike project, and they're mad that I'm not getting it finished. And the biggest reason I'm not working on it, folks, is on the left wing i still have to cut out the aileron which i could be doing but after that i'm ready to cover the wings i'm ready to cover the tail um you know the wing struts are done the tail's done the fuselage done the engine's basically almost broken in the airplane is just waiting to be covered and painted and that is a chunk of money i don't have right now so the air bike is still sitting in my storage unit under plastic ready to go as soon as I can get funds to move on. Now keep in mind folks, there's some things in the hobby you're going to see me working on, but it's because I only already own the materials or I own the motors or I own the ESCs. Okay? So that's that on the air bike. So now I want to talk about the rocket plane. Folks, I own all of the materials to finish this. It's just I don't have a drop plane set up for it to be launched from because this is going to be dropped from about 200 feet fly down to 50. The nose is pointed up about a 45. I'm going to light all four chambers and I'm going to go ballistic with this thing. So you may see some update videos where I'm working on this. Um, uh, but I own all the materials, all the servos. I, I mean, I, I, folks, this thing's almost done. I want to do a real quick um, touch on my mega power supply called the Turbo Dynamo 100K. 
it's basically a power supply that I take to the airfield. I don't need to take my uh, charger, I mean my generator, and basically can charge batteries. A huge shout out to my buddy Berger, who basically helped me understand how to build this thing. It's got 120 lithium ion batteries in it, and I can charge my uh, six cells Oh, probably 15, 16 times at the field, which is an awful lot of flying. But folks, what's cool about this is I charge it overnight at home, take it to the field, and I'm not charging any lipos at home. I'm charging lipos only at the airfield. It's got this neat little meter here that tells me how much I'm t bringing the voltage down and uh, when I've got to recharge it. Folks, I have tested this. It's incredibly cool. And it was one of the greatest things I've actually built in the last probably 20 years just because it makes my life so much easier to go out and fly. Okay, I'm not taking my generator. I'm not worrying about power at the field. Plug this in, run my chargers. I'm good to go. I also did a video, folks, about vacuum forming, and it's on my uh, YouTube right now. And, folks, basically, I'm, I'm really good friends with a follower uh, or became really good friends with a follower. He's about 92, and he builds these micro little fighter planes, or RC, three-channel. He reached out and said, Dag, I need canopies, and I can't find them anymore. It seems like nobody's making things for builders anymore. Everything's you know centered around ARFs and stuff. So he said, well, let me figure out if I can make you some canopies, because I used to do a lot of vacuum forming back in the 1890s. So, folks, there's a whole video on this on my YouTube, but basically I went to Amazon, bought this cheap little vacuum form, and made some really kick-ass little canopies. And, folks, you if you're new to the channel, you might not recognize this, but this was my MSL-1. This is a 71-pound electric 192-inch wing, 197-inch wing plane. It's been retired for many years in my storage. And uh, one thing, folks, in my inventory, I have a lot of stuff that I don't have to spend money on. ESCs, motors, all kinds of servos. I think I've got like 130 servos. When you see this fly next, it won't look like this at all. And I'm trying to do it for Seth next year. I'm gonna work a lot on it this winter, but this is gonna be a four-engined German bomber uh, <laughs> when it's done and you won't even recognize the MSL-1. I know some people are gonna be mad that the MSL-1 is, is basically gonna go away. <clears throat> Excuse me, but folks, um, I'm trying to build on the cheap right now because my funds are so scarce. I'm going to do a video very soon on this. This is why I call my car carrier or my, I mean my airplane carrier. And basically folks, <clears throat> excuse me, I need a way to be able to throw three planes in the back of my suburban and go to the field and fly because folks, I want to fly a lot more this year. And normally if I would go fly, I'd have to get my trailer out of storage, which takes about an hour. And then I got to pull that trailer around, got to be able to park it. So I decided to take some old scrap plywood I had and 3D print some parts and make this so I can slide it into the back of my Suburban and just go fly. Now, I may leave this in my Suburban until I need something else in my Suburban, but it's really easy. I mean, by myself, folks, I can pull this in and out of the back of my Suburban pretty easy. And there'll be a whole video on how I made this thing. Uh, but it's just, <clears throat> folks, I'm just so more excited that I can just basically, if, the, if I look outside and see the weather's good, I can just within 15, 20 minutes be headed to the field with my power supply and my plane carrier. This is some neat little uh, tie down holders, or I mean like wheel chucks that I made uh, out of 3D printed. And I use Velcro to hold the wheels down. And I've practiced probably a dozen times taking the planes in and out of the Suburban. And it's, it's really, really simple folks. It works absolutely perfect. And all these 3D printed parts folks will be on my Patreon. Um, again, I got my garage finally sorted out so I can hang all my planes, uh, my small planes on the walls. Cause normally these would live in my trailer and I have to go get my trailer. So, uh, folks, I am ready to turn and burn. If it's good weather outside within 15 minutes, I can have the suburban loaded and I'm going to do a lot more flying. And, um, I'm going to actually create a video series called at the field with DAG. And folks, I've got all these little cameras coming and all these things that I'm going to be hooking to my planes and I'm going to be posting a lot more flying videos. So thanks for watching, folks. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next update and rock on. Take care and bye bye.